What is going on, you beautiful, beautiful bastards? Welcome back to the channel. I am Brandon Sylvia. This is Unnecessary Rambling. Thank you all for stopping by today to look ahead at March 2023. Big month. A lot of uh, a, a ton of games coming out in March that I'm interested in, or at least kind of somewhat interested in, have my eye on. And um, yeah, let's not waste any more of your time. Let's jump into this thing. But let me know down in the comments below what is your most anticipated game of March 2023. And uh, the first one that's catching my eye here is Oni Road to the Mightiest Oni. And it is dropping on March 9th, 2023. And on the Game Informer website here, it's saying Switch and PC for March 9th. But there's physical PS5 copies releasing April 21st. 2023 so i'll probably just wait a month see you know what what the reviews are saying if the reviews end up glowing for this game uh, i'll definitely be picking it up it looks kind of like a death's door combat system blended with this uh, almost little little devil inside art style and and, and even some of the mechanics like with the, the exploration and the crafting and it, it has some little devil inside energy going on there. Just, just really, really unique looking great art style has a slightly mysterious undertone, not quite horror or not even maybe spooky, really just a, a ominous, uh, undertone like like something is lurking beneath the surface that we're not expecting I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of those games that is deceptively dark or something like that so I'm, I'm always down for that style of adventure I, I just have a weird feeling that this game will end up reviewing really well that it's going to be like a critical darling for 2023 could be wrong on that but i definitely have my eye on oni road to the mightiest oni and next here we go to march 17th for wwe 2k23 and this is releasing everywhere but the switch there's a lot going on with wwe 2k23 that i am very very interested in i thought wwe 2k22 was definitely a step in the right direction mechanically the, the moment to moment gameplay was really strong. There was some, you know, elements lacking with the career mode, with the depth of the GM mode, the limited match types and all that. But supposedly, you know, we're getting more match types for the GM mode. We're getting more matches you can add to your card. And so I, I'm hoping that the, the foundation that was laid with WWE 2K22 with the gameplay can still pretty much be there on a fundamental level and then the improvements can really start to show with you know the career mode the gm mode the universe mode and adding a little bit more depth into all of that we do know that we're getting a john cena showcase mode that is spanning 20 years of his career and you see in the the trailer that we're, we're getting like the the smackdown fist arena back so I, I i'm really curious if there's going to be any omg moments involving the fist jumping off the fist anything like that i would have a hard time believing they're including it into the game without having any sort of gameplay features tied to it uh, i would hope that you can jump off that damn fist that's like some of the most iconic shit from the the ps2 era smackdown games but yeah you know it, it looks like they are trying to add in like the kind of must have features like war games that that's essential that's an essential match type that has been missing for a while so having war games for the first time is going to be epic and you know talking about reworking the the universe mode to be a little bit more story focused and just just it seems that they are focusing in the right direction time will tell but these games anytime they release even the the not so great wwe games i play them bitches for like fucking 50 60 hours before i put them down just a huge wrestling video game fan and i'll probably be diving knee deep into this bad boy and uh seeing what all it has to offer and then we go to march 24th 2023 for resident evil 4 coming everywhere but the switch is anything 
Yeah, do we really need to expand on this one? This will be fucking epic. We know this will be epic. Capcom has been on a fantastic role since 2017 with RE7, going into 2019 RE2, and then a little bit of a misstep there with Resident Evil 3, but still a solid playing fun game. Going into Resident Evil 8 in 2021, absolutely fantastic. And now we're in 2023 with RE4. And it just looks so, so damn good. You know, having the, the countering the chainsaw with your knife, having a more stealth focus, getting more in-depth with the story, the backstory at the very beginning of the game, just having a... It, it looks to be more similar than any of the other remakes to the, the original. You know what I mean? Like, you had to totally reinvent the wheel for RE2, for RE3. This seems to be... Uh, obviously, as you go further into the years and you're remaking games that were closer to modern standards, you're not going to have as much to retool and reimagine. But it still seems that they're trying to keep the essence of Resident, e Resident Evil 4, the, the fun, jovial nature of Resident Evil 4 alive here, while, you know, maybe making it a little bit more dark, a little bit trying to lean into the horror a little bit more so can't wait to see how it turns out but i kind of you know we we already know this is going to be fucking epic can't wait to play it but more interesting than anything with that to me is now we're kind of unless we go to some more obscure titles like code veronica outbreak file one file two or it may be going back to Resident Evil 1 to remake that. Like, I don't really know where they go from here. What does Capcom do going forward? Do you go and explore the, the Ashford family a little bit with Code Veronica? Do you just go back and remake the remake of Resident Evil 1? You know, I, I would love to explore the, the Spencer Mansion with the, this new modern technology, seeing the Spencer Mansion next-gen only. Like, that would be absolutely epic but it is kind of you're you're out of you're out of obvious remakes i would say at this point and that's kind of exciting for me because the the future is so unknown right now where resident evil moves going forward we end the winter saga with shadows of rose and it's like okay so we really don't know what's coming next on the remake front we really don't know where the story is going next with Resident Evil 9. Like, it's just, I, I, I'm really pumped for this new era of Resident Evil. It's been a total renaissance. It's been a, a total turnaround from Resident Evil 6 to what we have now, from RE5 and RE6 to what we have now. So I just, I have, my my faith has been restored in Capcom, in this franchise, and I'm just really excited to see where we go moving forward into this kind of unknown territory for Resident Evil. So, I'm really pumped for that. But yeah, RE4, March 24th, 2023, releasing everywhere but on the Switch. Alright, and then we go to March 28th for the oddball of the month Crime Boss Rock A City. And it, th I'm, I'm looking at their Twitter right now, and it says launches March 28th on Epic Game Store, coming soon to PS5 and Series X slash S. So I'm guessing that... I'm guessing it, it'll come to PC first, and then consoles at a later date. But yeah, this is for sure... A, a very strange ass game. When you're looking at the cast of characters, you you have your your Chuck Norris's and your 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 Michael Rookers and your Vanilla Eyes. Like it's just a, it's definitely trying to be lighthearted, which I really do appreciate. I watched a a deep dive on the gameplay, like an extended gameplay trailer demo thing, and it looks like a fairly competent linear first person shooter i read about it has like some roguelite elements which as soon as i heard that i was immediately put off by it just because it felt like adding in something to a game that you know is supposed to be like lighthearted and fun and kind of just a romp 
and then adding in these more typically more difficult elements the the rogue like system is usually when you hear that you think of increased difficulty in a game and i'm just like man I, I don't know if this style of game and the the tone that you're going for if it really makes sense to have a roguelike system attached to it but the more I, I read up on it the more i started going oh shit this kind of sounds like chernobylite i, I don't know if you guys played that game but it was a, a survival horror title where it's a lot about like base management and you have this crew that you bring back to your base and you recruit members over time and you'll have like a a, a checkboard or a checklist on this map and, and it's like, okay, well, we need to go out and get more ammunition. We need to go out and get more resources. So I'm going to send my crew members out to go and do those tasks and I'm going to go over here and tackle this other specific task that we need done. And it's all kind of like ensuring your survival in Chernobylite. In Crime Boss Rocky City, it kind of seems like you're setting up different members of your crew to like plan out robberies in the city and bring, you know, the, the money and shit back to your base. And you're like, think of the GTA heists where you have the different people who are proficient in different skill sets, like different, you know, someone who's the getaway driver, someone who cracks the safe. And it seems like you're doing that here and maybe looking at how much each person costs and how good they are. And you're, you're planning out your runs and, you know, maybe if you have a more simple challenge that you need done, you don't take out your best people because if something goes wrong, they get killed. You don't get to bring them back into your party and have them for your next run. I, I think that's what they're going for here. I, I, I don't know for sure, but that the more I, I read into it, I was like, that actually could work really well for this type of system. But I'm definitely down for this story, I'm down for a more lighthearted, uh, just, just, I'm down for that tone, you know, everything has become so serious in these epic fantasy stories of, of bloodline betrayals and, and epic heartache and, and battle and like, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of down to just go and rob some fucking banks with vanilla ice, like, Hell yeah, sign me up. And the last up on the list for games that are catching my eye in March is the System Shock Remake, which is just slated for a March release window. No specific date attached to it yet. But yeah, it's it's releasing everywhere but the Switch. And yeah, man, you know, this is kind of the game that is looked at as like one of the godfathers of the immersive sim genre. Mixing that with a sci-fi horror vibe and, and, and story, like, yeah, I'm definitely going to check this thing out. If it gets delayed into April, May, June, I don't really care. I'll check it out whenever it releases. I'm, I'm really, you know, I love the immersive sim genre, and I would definitely like to play a game that inspired a lot of games that I enjoy now. So, for sure, System Shock Remake will be checking it out whenever it releases. Would I be surprised if it got delayed out of March? Absolutely not. It's been, you know, it's definitely been in development for quite some time and, and hit a, a few roadblocks, I would say. But whenever it drops, I'll be there checking it out for sure. All right. And now let's dive into the other releases for March. The uh, games that are maybe not so much for me, but still notable, still worth mentioning and still maybe worth checking out for some of you. March 3rd, 2023. Wo Long Fallen Dynasty coming to all platforms but the Switch, and it's also coming to Game Pass day one, which is where I will be checking this out. I'll at least play it for a couple hours, see if there's anything there that's real sticky and, and catches me more than just it being another Souls-like game. Um, yeah, but definitely going to check it out for a couple hours just with it being on Game Pass. March 6th, 2023. Dead Cells Return to Castlevania, releasing on last gen and Switch, and I believe PC as well. It looks... Incredible. I, I imagine that this is going to review incredibly, incredibly well. And yeah, it, it looks excellent. Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, March 9th, releasing on all platforms. I hope that these ports, the these older ports, are doing well for Fatal Frame because I would like to see like a real reboot of the franchise, like a next gen built for next gen systems version of Fatal Frame Return. 
I think that'd be excellent. I don't know if we'll ever get that, but I feel like if these ports are doing decently well, then maybe we could see that at some point. I don't know. It's just like with this survival horror renaissance, like Fatal Frame, Dino Crisis, uh, there's probably a couple other franchises that I can't think of that it'd be nice to see the return of some of those. And next up, March 10th, DC's Justice League Cosmic Chaos releasing on all platforms. This looks surprisingly good. It's got like a cartoony sort of aesthetic but with this top-down action combat, it, it looks decent. I'm, I'm keeping my eye on DC's uh, Justice League Cosmic Chaos. And then on March 17th, we have Bayonetta Origins. And uh, yeah, if you want to play a, a Zelda-like Bayonetta title and then remove the crazy, bombastic, over-the-top action and the crude nature and the sexuality and the vulgarity of Bayonetta I you you can do that on March 17th with Bayonetta Origins and then on March 28th we have MLB the show 2023 I, I'm not the biggest baseball fan in general but these damn career modes like I, I played the last time I played an MLB game was 2020 I believe and I played the damn career mode for like 15 hours. Like they're a lot of fun to dive into. So with this drop in day one on Game Pass, it, you know, it's like I said, releasing everywhere, but day one on Game Pass, I'm going to check it out for a few hours at least and see if that career mode is, is really solid. So yeah, MLB, the show 2023 releasing March 28th. And that is going to close up this video. I appreciate you all for tuning in. If there's any games I missed, any little maybe possible hidden gems that went over, over my head, under my radar, let me know in the comments. Hit me up and I will shoot the shit with you all. Appreciate you for tuning in and yeah, see you soon. Have a good one. Take it easy. Goodbye.